Hi folks, four kilobytes, 4,096 bytes. In Spacey 2018, that sounds like a rather minuscule amount, at least when it comes to Mon systems. But when it comes to humble 8-bitters, it's still quite a bit. And judging by all the entries received for this year's Reset 4K game combo, I'm kind of lucky that I'm not on judging duties this time around because there are a whole whopping 27 games submitted for the contest. So doing a run of each one in turn feels like it's going to take a lot of time. So what I am going to do instead is just make a video of a few picks, talk about why I thought they were the most interesting, and go on from there. So enough with the waffle, on with the picks. The first gem I wanted to spotlight was Gear Stralm's Wave Hero. Its name may deliver connotations of musical mastery, but the only mastery you really need here is that of timing. For Wave Hero involves you taking a ride on your shiny new personal watercraft and avoiding the rocks and reefs which crop up on your journey. All of this is controlled by holding the fire button down to dive, then release it to blast out of the water over an obstacle. Things may start out rather sedate, but as your trip increases, your craft speeds up, meaning you'll need to be diving and jumping at just the right time to keep yourself going. It's certainly a great pick for what can be done in 4K, with some colourful visuals and great controls making it a great score chasing experience. Next up, I wanted to highlight Mark Tank, coded by Malcontent. You take control of the Mark Tank, a one-of-a-kind nuclear platform, to save the Earth by wiping out a series of factory cities created by invading alien robots. The thing about the Mark Tank is that it's fast, and you better believe it is. This is a game where you'll be whirling about each stage at great speed, working your way towards the goal before the clock runs out. Now, it's not the prettiest entry here, with its focus on wiping out buildings which stand in your way, and this makes for some great destructibility in each level, which combined with the great speed of the gameplay really makes this one stand out for me. Especially picturing it as a bit of a speedrunning challenge. Just how quick can you clear your way to the end of the final city indeed? Fresh from making the minds of Vic-20 owners melt with cheese and onion, Misfit makes the jump to the C64 with Warner Thomas Fahrenheit. Or simply just WTF. It's a platformer, but this time it's not as we know it. Taking a cue from the likes of Lemmings, you're not directly controlling Warner, but rather you guide him across each of the levels. Thankfully, all you need to do is really just keep scrolling the screen, and Warner will catch up to the centre of it as you do so. It does sound and kind of is a little confusing initially, but once you've had a few rounds, you'll get used to how it works, and then it's all about flinging WTF across each of the levels before the time runs out. I don't know about you, but for me, seeing weird takes on existing genres is something I'm always excited by, and watching WTF fit into a, f a mere 4K is an amazing bit of work indeed. Taking time out from his adaptation of indie hit Spelunky, Paul D-Make Master Collar returns with Conga 4096, a take on the indie game Pan-Dimensional Conga Combat. It's a bit of a weird title, eh? Now, this might look like just another arena shooter, but the twist is, rather than blasting enemies, is that you use your trail to take them out instead. So, move across the screen, lead the enemies into your trail to take you out for points, it's a jolly simple concept, and the execution here is top-notch. Fluid controls, crisp visuals, and some really thumping music all making up the package. Sure, arena action games like this are a dime a dozen, but the focus here on leading your enemies provides a package which, for me, is truly unique amongst the entries in this combo. And even beyond that, to the C64 itself. Now onto the first of the releases from Ponda Software's sibling label Privy, and it's Chef Quest, designed by that wonderful friend of the channel, Ant Stiller. It's an RPG, 
but not as you know it. You take charge of a culinary champion on a dangerous journey into the depths of his restaurant to obtain the most delectable denizens of the dungeon for use in his culinary creations. You'll be exploring each of the rooms on the dungeon's three floors, where there's a mix of chests, offering items which can be helpful, or serve as a hindrance, and battling the creatures within. This offers a great taste of timing, as battling them requires you to time hits precisely on the power bar. And too many misses will result in that poor chef taking damage, and ultimately ending up as the dish of choice down in the dungeons. It's got to be said, RPGs are not the easiest of games to get into. But the fact we have one here which is challenging, fun, and fits into such a small amount of memory, this is truly the rare work of a refined master in my book. The other release from the Privy Banner is Dustin, by none other than Graham Axton, best known for the Bear Essentials and of course, Bonky Kong from the last 4K compo. This is a game which has you controlling that titular robot in a quest to clean out dust from inside the best 8-bit microcomputer on the planet. What this is tails is flying about the innards, collecting dust particles and avoiding the electrical pulses travelling down the circuitry. Like many of the other games in the compo, this starts out with a fairly chilled pace, but slowly but surely tightens the screws on the challenge in no short order, by throwing more and more electrical pulses at you. Admittedly, I found them a little tricky to see at first, but once you recognise their threat, they're just about getting in the flow and keeping out of their way. The dust fly that is because, let's face it, Dustin makes you feel good. Now, onto the final entry I wanted to showcase, and this is Orbs, developed by Raffaele Formato, and aims to adapt the mobile hit Duet onto the humble C64. This is all about navigating your way through a series of obstacles, and whilst that sounds kind of simple, as always, the devil is in the details. As the title suggests, you're controlling a fixed pair of orbs, and rather than moving them directly, you're rotating them around a fixed point on screen. You will need to spin them about to fit between the gaps in the platforms as they scroll down. Now, unsurprisingly, this one is kind of all about the mastery as it gets tough very darn quickly. Which may be a turn off for some of you folks, but for me personally, I'm a bit of a sucker for this type of challenge. I had a lot of fun with Duet playing it on my iPhone, and playing Orbs pretty much carries on that tradition very well. All Up has got some gorgeous presentation audio, and it's a tough game, but it's one that's going to keep you challenged for quite some time. And there we are. Those were my picks from the contest. I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad I'm not on judging dues because while there are many submitted in the contest like this, one can't really help but feel that the ones that you're going to enjoy the most are way different from the ones that these ones that I show, which are the ones that I enjoy the most. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the judges have ahead of them. That It doesn't feel like much, but it's actually quite a bit of work ahead for them. And I'm so glad I'm not in that pun panel. So... Realistically, let me know um, if you've got if you've had a chance to check the entries out. Um, if you haven't, there is the link down below that'll have them. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favourites were. Uh, I'm interested to see whether you know some people like the joke entries a little more than the more serious ones, which are the ones I tended to like. Um, and you know, so let me know what you think there. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. Uh, I usually pull out new videos every week. Uh, do subscribe, do hit the bell, that's the really important thing, because sometimes YouTube just doesn't tell you subscribing, hitting subscribe and enough these days, so hit the bell, um, get notified when new episodes come out, and with that, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.